Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, unfortunately, we're taking another look at a system fail by an individual who feels he's disseminating information to his Facebook group to give them instructions on how to not only connect a Proma THC-150, but he also goes in and actually delves into his system a little bit. And once again, guys, I want to make this very clear. I'm not here to berate anybody. I think this individual is trying to do the right thing. Unfortunately, I think there comes a point when you need to be honest with yourself in that if this is not a genre you understand fully, you should not be spreading any information at all unless you know it's correct. We see here the Proma THC-150 mounted right by the computer's monitor, and that's completely incorrect. The unit should be mounted, and this is direct from the end user's manual, right on the actual uh, plasma cutter itself. It's supposed to be mounted as close as possible. The main reason it is is so that it can detect voltage uh, with the least amount of mitigation in terms of variance. We want to make sure that those relays function as they should. Now, what's really baffling to me is this is in direct correlation with the user's manual. I'm going to bring it up on screen right here. And you guys can read this out of the user's manual yourself. Matter of fact, I did a video on this previously like a week ago. I had an end user forward me videos, um, actually a couple videos. This was probably the worst I've seen. And then you can see his system down here. I'm going to hit play and let him explain what's going on, and then we'll break it down. Go on the SD, so I can go into a little more detail on how the 150 operates, a little bit on the wiring. So start off with just take a peek at the, the 150. I do have the divide Okay, let me see if I can let it focus a little bit. We can see he's got his cable here. Of course, there's no grounds. It's not shielded. There's no drains. There's nothing. That dividing voltage comes up the gray wire on top. He's got a jumper from negative to common. He's also using daisy chaining, which you're not supposed to do. This is not best practice, mainly because if you have to troubleshoot, you could be chasing your tail. So, guys, I'm telling you, break down what you're doing very, very carefully. If you don't know, then hire someone that does. I mean, whether it be me or anybody else, I mean, there's a point of safety and also a point of how much money are you going to waste when you see things like this. Now, I could tell you a real quick example of how he can make this video and it actually be the correct information. And it would be if he went through and said, hey, here is how I have my system set up to test. And I want to see if everything I'm testing with actually functions as it should, meaning I've connected every wire or cable lead to where I feel it should go to see if the system performs as it should. Once you've actually allocated to saying that to your audience, that changes things. And say something like, I'm going to go back and rebuild the system correctly in terms of using proper grounding, going over the chassis to make sure it's properly grounded, as well as the electronics enclosure, using the proper double shielded cables, which is not an accessory. It is mandatory on a plasma system. You have very, very high levels of EMI. Once again, I always bring up Lincoln Electric, not because I work with them, not because I have one of their systems. It's because they sell some of the most elaborate plasma systems in the country. If you're going to mimic doing something, mimic doing it to the best of someone's ability in terms of what they produce. And if you look at what they produce, it's absolutely astounding. And that's why they get 50 to 100K a system because they know what they're doing. Their engineers have done this forever. When I see things like this, it becomes more frustrating because the questions that I get asked then is, hey, Vin, look at this video. What do you think? And we go through this and watch. Right here. Okay, guys, we look at this system I don't know what else to call it and there is a lot of problems here once again there is no double shielded cables being used there's no grounds he has two power supplies I see that being done constantly 
And usually why it's being done is because that's when China is bundling the cheapest components in terms of, hey, if we have these on the shelf, let's just give them two of them, and then they can run a four-axis system. Let me explain how using an actual power supply should work, especially with uh, a plasma system, is you want one power supply. The more power supplies you add, regardless of voltage, you're increasing the EMI. Wouldn't it make more sense to just use a larger power supply in terms of amperage so it can supply all of the drives rather than you having to deal with two power supplies? What this tells me is two things. First of all, it tells me that the guy who's building this has no idea what he's looking at with electronics. It also tells me that whoever sold him this, and typically it's Chinese because we see all the Chinese drives here, Overseas, they bundle the components based on what they have in their warehouse. So they're not looking at what you can get away with in terms of logic and what you should be using. They look at what's easier for them to produce or what's available. They bundle it. The deal looks good because to this guy, you know, spending 200 bucks on a kit makes sense. He buys it. He then goes to assemble it, and this is what he comes up with. He's connected all the leads to the best of his ability to give him a system, and we're back to this again. And we see, so if you're not familiar. and again, just for my, my guys out there who are just getting involved with the genre, you can see the two power supplies right here. We have power supplies, two of them. These are the silver things, the black boxes. There's four of those, one for each motor. Okay, black boxes, one for each motor. He's talking about drives, guys. Okay. Again, we see jumpers here. No grounding, just straight holes drilled for cables. The interesting things with videos like this, I always find, and I want you guys to really pay attention to this if you're serious about getting involved with plasma systems, look who you're learning from. And what I say with that, you could fast forward this whole video and see if he makes any long cuts. Ask yourself this, on YouTube, how many guys do you see actually cutting a project or fast forwarding a cut? You know how they always show printer videos where the guy starts and then they fast forward the video and you see the finished part? We don't see that a lot with routers. We see a little bit, but not a lot. You know why you don't see it as much? Because it takes a long time to actually put together something like that, knowing that the machine is not going to screw up. Guys like this want to show you quick little excerpts of what they feel they've accomplished, and yet you didn't see this chassis cut for 10 hours to see if it's stable. That's what I'm curious about. Because all this controller crap that we're seeing, and we see a lot of it, trust me, where guys think that, you know, oh, hey, this is what I figured out. They figured out either how to connect something, and that's where it ended. The electronic side, understanding what they're dealing with with grounding, what they're dealing with with EMI, what they're dealing with with going through the table and making sure that everything there is properly grounded, checking the ohms rating to see if it's actually grounded, because anything above three ohms is not considered grounding for CNC robotics. This is, once again, in the PDF manual direct from Lincoln Electric. Anybody who wants to build a plasma system, I gladly offer it to you for free. I'm not charging you for it. If you think you can do this and disseminate this and understand exactly what needs to be done or want to learn, I'll genuinely give it to you. The only thing I'm saying is don't go online and do stuff like this. It confuses the hell out of people. Those are your step drivers. Okay, pop in here, this break on board. On these, they do have. We can see over here the shield, and I don't know if he thinks, he must think that because, I think, I believe it's a shield, he thinks that because the cable has shielding and no drain is associated with the ground, that he doesn't have to worry about EMI. Guys, if you connect cables that are shielded or double shielded for that matter, that do not have a ground drain allocated to a ground bus in the system with, a, with an actual uh, continuity ground bus bar, you are SOL. That cable will function just as a regular cable, transferring signals, and will not perform as it should, mitigating EMI. Okay? Of the pinouts. So looking over here, I've got... I know he's got crimp connections over here. Not That should never be done. You never want to splice wires. I get that question a lot. Should I splice a spindle cable together? No. That's the simple answer. You would never, ever, ever splice a three-phase cable together. What you do is replace it with the correct length. Or you just measure correctly the first time. The first thing I tell my guys that are trying to measure for the correct length of a spindle cable is simulate the cable with the string. 
using a string to allocate positional location on the chassis, whether you're running through a cable chain or running it whichever way you're doing it arbitrarily, but at least you can simulate it exact to the, to the length you need so you never purchase more than you have to. But by the same token, you're not purchasing a cable too short. So again, guys, be careful. is wired. Okay. We do have our e stop here. This one goes down to the brake. You can see he daisy chained a lead from the e stop over. Go forward. That's between ground and input five. Uh, the arc OK signal is input four. And then these two wires here are my up and down signals. Now he could have just, like I said, shrank this video down into more like, here's my diagram for how I connected everything and I'm done. And left it with a wiring diagram. Doing what he's doing here, showing guys this, this is what they think. I don't need that. I can get away with this. I'll just hook it up the way he said. Problem. Here, coming in. Turn back around, going up top for my divided voltage. Okay, Looks like up here on the drive. Let's see if we can, there we go. Let's see if we can get his hand and out of the way. Right here. He's got two leads going in here. I mean, I'm almost certain most of the Chinese drives are now coming with um, directions stating that you should not be daisy chaining. When I see things like this, guys, it's treacherous. And what's really interesting is usually when guys have problems, it's always driven and amplified and exacerbated by the fact that they don't know how they connected things. Meaning, they go in, they just connect wires, and then they have to go back and retrace everything. And then when you daisy chain, you have two or three extra traces to go through. It makes it that much harder. So, be careful. I cannot emphasize that enough. As he goes through this whole thing, we can see more and more jumpers here. Look, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Let's just keep going. I'm just fast-forwarding it. Again, he's going over the voltages. But in this whole video, and I'm just fast-forwarding it, and it's seven minutes, almost eight minutes long. Again, he's playing with the Proma. He shows you his box. Comes over. He's showing you Mach 3 setup. And by the end of the video, you would have thought that he would have showed you, an, you know, a cut. Like, let's see how the unit cuts if, if it's running stable. That's what most everybody wants to see is to cut. They want to see if this unit that you built is able to do what it's supposed to do. I myself, logically, if I see a Proma set up incorrectly, I'm naturally going to think, well, then what else is set up incorrectly? But if I'm a novice and I don't know that the Proma actually should be mounted to the actual base of the plasma system itself and the reason behind it, then I would think this guy did everything right. But knowing that that's how he started the video... Do you really believe I even had to say anything about this unit? Because once again, we're all if, if they're here to learn, if they really, really want to learn, then why once again aren't we reading the user's manual? That to me is disappointing. As a vendor who gets questions daily, I think it's completely illogical to try to assemble a plasma controller, let alone a system, and not read the user's manual that comes bundled with one of the components. It's ridiculous. So... Again, I hope that this video has helped many of you. Once again, if you are interested in building a plasma system yourself, you don't need to buy my components. You can check out my store. I do plasma systems literally at least three a month. And I can tell you right now, the best thing you can do is educate yourself on what animal you're getting involved with. Because I'm telling you right now, to start with this guy or something like this, you are really starting at the bottom of the totem pole, and usually you end up troubleshooting your system more than actually getting to run it. Take the Lincoln PDF manual that I have on EMI and grounding so you know exactly what you're getting involved with. It's free, and then you determine how far down the rabbit hole you want to go. Because I'm going to tell you right now, to deal with a plasma system, 
even with my background, when I first started, took me about two to three months to understand all of the variables involved. You don't believe me? When you read the manual, I think you will. So again, I thank you all for your support. Take care.